Thank you. Uh, okay, so um, I am here to talk about bias auditing. Uh, auditing um, artificial intelligence systems is now all the rage, but uh, we began working uh, on this topic some time ago with a lot of people. Uh, we have tried to amass uh, a diversity of people, so here are the people who are uh, permanent in our work team, uh, these are the people, uh, but uh, we actually have had uh, hands-on workshops uh, with uh, diverse people from uh, extremely different, back no, not extremely different, but uh, quite different backgrounds. Uh, so people working in uh, nutrition, people, uh, journalists and uh, uh, data scientists as well, uh, to um, get the grasp about how bias auditing could really, really work. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what bias is and then how we have approached it. Uh, so bias, as per the definition of the Oxford uh, languages, is an inclination of or prejudice for or against one person or group in a way considered to be unfair. Yeah, And uh, how does this translate into our everyday life, uh, usually in our everyday life, this translates in the form of stereotypes. Yeah? Stereotypes are subtle but very, very useful ways of packaging bias. And I am going to give you an example, just uh, so we are sure that we are in the same page. Uh, for example, would you consider hiring Sylvester Stallone for your film? Uh, you probably, maybe not, maybe you would, but... Uh, Probably what you would not is consider hiring them as hiring him as a screenwriter, yeah. Although he was shortlisted for uh, for the Oscar as best uh, screenwriter for uh, for Rocky, yeah. And um, right, I'm I'm not very much into this kind of film. Um, so this this is an unfair situation for him because you are not giving him the same uh, possibilities as other people for this job. Yeah? Even though he is a white male uh, coming from a central country and uh, strongly recognized professionally. Yeah? So imagine what is left for the rest of people who are not so well positioned. Um, so this is how stereotype hurts. And uh, in language technologies, we have lots and lots and lots of stereotypes uh, that uh, produce unfair situations for people. Um, for example, if you type the poor people are, yeah, uh, this, this search engine tends to complete uh, your search because it assumes that you will probably look for what most of the people have been looking for or have been writing about this. And I am going to give the completion in Spanish because in English it has been word railed already. And probably in Spanish it has as well uh, by this time. Um, and you can see that some of the autocompletions that this uh, mainstream uh, search engine gives for los pobres son are things like los pobres son responsables de su propia pobreza, which uh, means uh, the poor are responsible for their, their own poverty, uh, which if you are poor and you're using this, uh, tends to have an effect on how you ought to perceive yourself, and which is not so positive. Yeah? Um, and you have more autocompletions in the same line. It's not just one error, it's a systematic error. And that is what we call bias in uh, data science, or artificial intelligence, or uh, the, the marketing name that you choose for this is a systematic error, non-homogeneous er error. Yep. So um, this is uh, something that we want to audit systems for. We want to uh, audit systems and see if they have this kind of uh, systematic behavior that discriminates against some uh, group. Yeah. Um, and in some cases, these biases are huge, like gender bias. Gender bias is something that we all know uh, that is pervasive in most of cultures. Yeah. And uh, we, we kind of have a, a consensus on how to model it and it's uh, um, we have resources to do that, and so we, we kind of 
have, uh, can, can have uh, been advancing in how, how to measure that. But some others are not uh, so, uh, so huge. They are more subtle and they are difficult to perceive, to formalize, to uh, transform into something that can be used systematically by anyone. Yeah? Uh, most of them are culture dependent. Uh, and uh, this means that they are also language dependent. So you cannot reuse what has been done in one language for other languages. You cannot reuse what has been done in the same language for one culture to another culture within the same language. Uh, so this means that it is critical who defines bias. Yeah? Because only people with bias experience can uh, define bias. So only people with experiences in discrimination can, uh, can get to, to, to define bias. Yeah? And experiences in discrimination come in all colors, not only in white. Yeah? But we have been having a huge problem with this. Uh, although bias auditing has been advancing in academia, so it's a hot topic in, in conferences, and there are many, many papers and toolkits and frameworks and proposals about uh, how to measure bias in language technologies in particular, but in general also in images and whatever. The very big uh, problem that we found uh, when working with this is that uh, these approaches are very technical, are highly technical. That not only that uh, they require you to be able to program, some, some of them do not exactly require programming skills, but uh, they require that you manage mathematical concepts. And they, uh, they want you to install complex software. And uh, they resort to uh, terms that are very, very, very technical. So, uh, people with discrimination experiences have to climb over these very steep technical barriers to be able to express their uh, discrimination experience. And that is uh, suboptimal, highly suboptimal. So what we did was a tool uh, to facilitate uh, that people with discrimination experience and when I say discrimination experience, um, I'm talking about not only that they have suffered discrimination or that they consistently suffer discrimination, but also that they um, have studied it or work with that. Yeah? Uh, that these people can express uh, their knowledge uh, in, uh, without the technical barriers. Yeah? So uh, we, in this tool, we resort to intuitive concepts, and we have extensively tested that these concepts are actually intuitive for people who are not in uh, data science. Um, and uh, intuitive concepts like, OK, uh, you think that the, the technology that you're using is biased. Uh, how do you see that? Well, you can see that, like actually see that this way. For example, these are the words uh, fat in masculine and fat in feminine. Uh, and this is uh, ugly in masculine, ugly in feminine in Spanish. OK, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, and you can see that um, they are far space, yeah? But you can see that um, fat, uh, fat, sorry, fat feminine and ugly feminine are very close in this dimension. They are almost both at uh, this line, while uh, masculine fat and uh, masculine ugly are much more separated. So this means that in some respects, uh, fat feminine and ugly feminine are equivalent while fat masculine and fat uh, feminine, uh, ma fat masculine and ugly masculine are not equivalent, yeah, in that same dimension, yeah, and this is something quite intuitive. Underlying this, there are vectors, there are distances, there's uh, cosine and principal components and embeddings, yeah, and uh, neural networks and all the blah 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 technical things that you want. But this can be understood. Actually, this is not something that we came up with. This is something that. Uh, 
people working in the social perception of uh, eating habits uh, intuitively knew and they checked it in our tool and they found this. This is a finding that these people found about uh, the underlying artifacts in uh, language technologies that are actually deployed. Uh, so how does this translate in discrimi discriminative, discriminative behavior of technologies? For example, like this, the, the completion of the fat, masculine, plural, is um, Gordo Spondiola and uh, uh, Ali, mm, the fat in Alice in Wonderland and the fat uh, suffer less the cold. <laughs> uh, and when you have the fat in mm, feminine plural, you have uh, they, they are disgusting, they can get pregnant, which are less positive uh, completions. Yeah? Uh, so, and to do this, we did not need to resort to any of these uh, concepts that I have been mentioning and that uh, populate all the um, uh, literature about bias auditing in academia and uh, available frameworks. So, uh, we are happy uh, to be working with the intuitive um, approach because we find this is useful and productive for people to express their um, intuitions about bias. Uh, but this, as you can see, is a little bit uh, anecdotal and you need to be more systematic in the way that you audit bias. So this is why we provide something like this. Yeah, this is more systematical than ca that can be collapsed into a, a number, a figure that you can report to uh, the competent authority or whomever. Yeah, this is, for example, uh, in uh, to the right you have a uh, feminine, to the left you have masculine, and you can see that uh, verbs like argument or think or ask are uh, closer to the uh, masculine meaning than to the feminine meaning, while uh, knitting, sewing, uh, and dancing are more closer to the feminine, yeah? Uh, and this uh, kind of systematization can be achieved by just listing words that represent the feminine meaning, like woman, she, mother, girl, whatever words, uh, the people with the experience know that represent the meaning that they consider as feminine, uh, the same for the masculine, and then uh, check whether words that should be in the middle are in the middle or not. Yeah? Uh, with uh, the typical example of these are professions. Yeah? You have a representation of feminine with she, blah, 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 uh, a representation of uh, uh, masculine with he, uh, man, or whatever, and then you have um, professions, and you will say, okay, but you have then for example, professor feminine, and then professor masculine, and are and they are feminine and masculine. But you can see things like um, nurse feminine, which is very much into the feminine side. Nurse masculine, which is the least masculine of the masculine professions. Yeah, and this is uh, clearly biased. Yeah, and this is quantifiable. Uh, and this is reportable, this is systematic, and this is uh, all available in this uh, tool that is graphical, and you do not need to know that this is measured using cosine distance with uh, one whatever, yeah? Good. Um, so what is critical here is not that you know about vectorial space and uh, distances and similarities, but about word lists representing the biases, the stereotypes that you're experiencing or that you have experience with. And for that, the only thing that you know is experts. Experts have a hierarchical role in auditing uh, uh, systems if you do not have technical barriers. Yeah. When we were working with this in the first hands-on workshops, uh, the, the feedback that we got from experts that was that this was very limited. Working with words was limited because words uh, are ambiguous. We knew that. Yeah, I'm a linguist myself. We knew that from the start, but the, this was the first thing that we had. So uh, words uh, are ambiguous. They are inherently vague. They, they need the context to specify their meaning. And then there's also multi-word expressions, uh, things that you express with more than one word. And then there are 
non-binary semantics like uh, age, you, you do not have old and young, you also have um, child and uh, young and teenage and middle-aged, uh, so it's, it, it's inadequate to express that uh, uh, with the, this kind of diagram, isn't it? Yeah? You don't want that. Uh, we also have problems with non-marked meanings, like we said, okay, we want to check about indigenous, but then what is the opposite of indigenous? Non-indigenous? No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> okay, so uh, to address that, we worked with language models. Yeah. Uh, we worked with language models. Language models are all the rage right now with ChatGPT, but this was before that, when language models already existed because they have been existing for some time now. And what we did was work with sentences. Uh, people express uh, their uh, the biases, the possible biases in sentences. And if your language model is not biased, it should give equal probability. It should prefer all sentences equally. Uh, and if it is biased, uh, it means that it is more likely to say one thing than another. For example, here you see the Bolivians cannot manage their money, the Argentinians cannot manage their money, the German cannot manage uh, their money. Uh, guess which of these sentences the language model is more likely to produce, like GPT. Yeah? GPT is more likely to say the Bolivians cannot manage their money than the German cannot manage their money. Yeah? This is a very nice way for, for people to express their experience of uh, discrimination, their experience of stereotypes, and uh, it is quite easy to measure if a given uh, artifact, a given language model, like the one that is underlying chat GPT or Llama or whichever language model that you like uh, has a preference to say one thing or the other. Uh, so now we are quite happy with our instruments, but we are uh, people working in computer science. I'm a linguist, but I uh, have been working in computer science uh, for a long time now, so my imagination is uh, beneath uh, the standard that any standard that you can uh, get to. So we have only been working with gender and race. There are many, many, many more biases to be studied. So we need experts uh, to to create these resources, word lists, sentence lists, yeah. And uh, we are expecting, we are working now toward uh, people using uh, this uh, or any other uh, approach. But we are very confident that our tool is useful to um, create these lists that represent the stereotypes that they experience uh, so that these lists can be readily used for people working uh, with artifact, these, these artifacts, these language technologies to have a first audit of, this, of their technologies to assess what next steps uh, need to be addressed uh, with the results of um, your audit. So uh, we encourage you to um, create these word lists, contact us. Uh, we are working towards um, having uh, these approaches uh, more widely used and to have experts uh, in the hierarchical central role that they deserve in the development of uh, audits uh, for language technologies.